The box on the table contains a new arrival to the Reptile Centre here at Sparshaw. Uh, for the last couple of months we've been quarantining this snake off site. Um, quarantine is really, really important with reptiles because they do carry a variety of pathogenic disorders which quarantine obviously will, will identify and hopefully you, you will cure. The snake is contained within a polystyrene box. We use polystyrene because it's a good insulating material. As you know by now, reptiles, because they're ectothermic, we need to find some way when we're transporting them outside of their heated environment to keep them at a safe and comfortable temperature. And polystyrene boxes are easily available and do the job extremely well. Inside the box, the snake is transported inside a cloth bag, which has been securely fastened at the top. We use a cloth bag because cloth well, is a breathable fabric. The animal is nice and secure within this bag, but it can still breathe quite freely through the weave of the fabric. Also contained within the box, wrapped up in a towel, is a hot water bottle. It's important to provide a heat source for reptiles when they're being transported for any distance. Cloth bags make a suitable transport container for many reptiles, particularly snakes and larger lizards. If you're moving smaller species, for example small geckos or juvenile animals, it can sometimes be best to transport them inside a solid plastic container, containing something like dried moss or crumpled paper, something that can absorb any impact to keep the animal nice and secure for the duration of its journey. We're going to open the bag. It's important when you are opening a neat container that you can't see into, to make sure you have an idea where the animal actually is. Remember that transport is going to be quite a stressful procedure for the animal, so it may behave quite erratically. When removing any reptile from a bag, because you can't necessarily see where the animal is, always try and get an idea as to where its head is and how it's behaving. Transport, as we said, can be fairly stressful, so the animal may behave quite erratically. Also, if it's an animal that you're not familiar with, be aware um, that unfamiliar smells and being in unfamiliar surroundings may cause the animal to behave defensively. Once you've found the animal within the bag, you can then grab hold of it and handle it in the usual way. So this is our juvenile milk snake. Um, we've actually owned it at the college for several months. It's been quarantined in our off-site quarantine facility and we're bringing it now today into our main reptile room where it's going to spend the rest of its life um, as a teaching aid for students and kind of educating them about the care of these animals. So we're now going to put our milk snake into its new enclosure. Because it's a new arrival at the reptile centre, we want to be extremely sure that it's in good health, um, that it adapts and acclimatises well to its new environment. As a result of that, the enclosure has been set up in an extremely simple manner. We've used newspaper as a substrate rather than, say, sand or soil or bark chippings. This allows us to keep a really close check on its faeces to make sure that they're of normal consistency and that it is in fact producing them. We've included lots of hiding places, as we know by now, secure refuges are extremely important for reptiles in captivity. Um, being moved into new accommodation is quite a stressful time for any animal, not just a reptile. In about a month or so's time, once we're sure that the snake is well established, well settled and is feeding regularly, we'll change the arrangement of the enclosure to include some of the more natural features that we've looked at with other species.